Chapter 27. Ask Not For Whom The Bell Tolls, M. Ali. The ball carrier was somewhere under Gleep when the whistle blew. That wouldn't have been too bad if it weren't for the fact that Chumley had already thrown the ball carrier to the ground and jumped on him prior to my pet joining in the fracas. As I said before, Gleep had really gotten into the spirit of things. I say, came an agonized call from the patrol, do you mind? Sorry, I apologized, backing the dragon on a more solid footing. Say, Skeeve, Gus murmured, sliding up beside me, how much longer until we're set for the big play? Should be any minute now, I confided. Why do you ask? He's afraid of additional casualties you and that dragon will inflict on the team while we're stalling for time, Badax chimed in sarcastically. Gleep, my pet commented, licking the general's face. You might as well forget the hard guy act, Hugh, the gargoyle observed. The dragon's got you pegged as a softie. Is that so, Badax argued, gasping a bit on, Gleep, deep, on Gleep's breath. Well, allow me to point out that with the master plan about to go into effect, we don't have the ball. Ski will get it for us when we need it, Tananda protested, rising to my defense. He always comes through when we need him. You'll just never followed, you've just never followed him into battle before. I believe I can testify, Chumley growled, limping back to join us, that it is safer to be following him than in front of him. Sorry about that, Chumley, I winced. It's just the Gleep, I know, I know, the troll interrupted, spooked under fire. Remember, I gave you that excuse originally. He seems to have recovered admirably. I hate to interrupt, Gus interrupted, but isn't that our signal? I followed his gaze to the sidelines. Griffin was there, waving his arms wildly. When he saw he had my attention, he crossed the, the fingers on both hands, then crossed his forearms over his head. That was the signal. All right, I announced. Fun time is over. The messages have been delivered. Does everyone remember what they're supposed to do? As one, the team nodded, eager grins plastered on their faces. I don't know what they were so cheerful about. If any phase of this plan didn't work, some or all of us would be goners. Denanda and Chumley make one team. Bad X, you stick with Gus. He's your ticket home, I repeated needlessly. We know what to do, the general nodded. Then let's do it, I shouted and wheeled Gleep into position. This time, as the ball came into play, we did not swarm toward the ball carrier. Instead, our entire team backpedaled to cluster in the mouth of our goal. Our opponents hesitated, looking at each other. We had emptied over three quarters of their reserve, teaching them to respect our strength, and now that lesson was bearing fruit. No one seemed to want to be the one to carry the ball into our formation. They weren't sure what we were up to, but they didn't want any part of it. Finally, the ball carrier, a Tahoe player, turned and threw the ball to his rider, apparently figuring the bug had the best chance of breaking through to the goal. That's what I had been waiting for. Reaching out with my mind, I brought the ball winging, not to me, but to Hugh Badax. In, one, in a smooth, fluid motion, the axe came off the general's belt and struck at the missile. I had never seen axe, uh, Hugh use his axe before, and I'll admit I was impressed. Weapon and ball met, and the weapon won. The ball fell to the ground in two halves as the axe returned to its resting place on the general's belt. The crowd was on its feet, screaming incoherently. If they didn't like that, they didn't really, they'd really get upset over our next move. Everybody mount up, I shouted. On cue, Tananda jumped on Chumley's back, and Bad Axe did the same with Gus. I levitated half the ball to each twosome, then did a fast disguise spell. What our opponents saw now was three images of me astride three images of Gleep. Each image of me had half a ball proudly in its possession. The more mathematically oriented of you might realize that that adds up to three halves. Very good. Fortunately for us, jocks aren't big on math. The question remains, however, of where did the third half come from? You don't think I was standing by idly while all this was going on, do you? While my teammates were mounting up, I took advantage of the confusion to do one more levitation slash disguise job. As a result, the trophy was now resting in front of me on Gleep's back, disguised as half a ball. It was the same stunt I had pulled in Vegas, but this time I draped my shirt over it. Chumley, I called. Start your spell. I'm done, he waved back. We meet back at Claw, I shouted. Now, go for it. My teammates started up opposite sidelines, heading for both our opponents' goals simultaneously. I waited a few beats for them to draw off the tacklers, then started for my objective. Gleep and I were going for Oz. With all due modesty, my plan worked brilliantly. The appearance of devils throughout the crowd sent the jocks into a state of panic. The crossbowmen were too busy trying to get a shot of those, these new invaders to pay any attention to me. Well, most of them were. One or two bolts whisked past me, but they were poorly aimed. For some reason, the beans shooting at them seemed a bit rattled. I caught sight of uh, 
The beans shooting at me seemed a bit rattled. I caught sight of Quigley standing on his feet and waving his arms. Catchy phrases like, Be gone, foul spirits, and I vanquish thee, were issuing from his lips as he did his routine. That This didn't surprise me. Not that I felt Quigley was particularly quick thinking in a crisis. It had to do with the messages I had sent to both him and Masha before the play started. The messages were simple. Stand by to repel an invasion of demons. P.S. Go through the motions. I'll take care of the demons. Skeev. I caught his eye and winked at him. In return, one of his demon-dispelling waves got a little limp-wristed as he nodded slightly, bidding me adieu. In the middle of saving his employers from an invasion of demons, he, who could blame him if a few departed who were supposed to stay put? Oz's unconscious body came wafting toward us in response to my mental summons. Gleep stretched out his long neck and caught my mentor's tunic in his mouth as he floated by. It wasn't quite the way I planned it, but I was in no position to be choosy. Tightening my legs around Gleep's middle, I hit the button on the D-hopper, and the walls of my room were a welcome change from the hostile stadium. We did it, I exclaimed, then was startled by the volume of my voice. After the din of the stadium, my room seemed incredibly quiet. Kid, came a familiar voice, would you tell your stupid dragon to put me down before I die from his breath? Gleep, my pet asked, dropping my mentor in an undignified heap. Ah, as I blinked, I thought you were out cold. Not hardly. Can you think of a better way to get Tananda out on the field? For a while there, I was afraid you wouldn't figure it out and call for a replacement. You mean you were faking all along? I demanded. I was scared to death. You could have warned me, you know. Like you warned me about your vanishing act? He shot back. And what happened to my orders to head for home once Tananda was in the clear? Your orders? I stammered. Well, there was a soft bamp, and Gus and Bad Axe were in the room. Gus was holding the general cradled in his arms like a baby, but they both looked in good spirits. Beautiful, Hugh, Hugh chortled, hugging the gargoyle around the neck. If you ever need a backup, man, if you ever need a partner, Gus corrected, hugging him back. You and I could bamf. Chumley and Tananda appeared sprawled on the bed. Both her nostrils were bleeding, but she was laughing uproariously. Chumley was panting for breath and wiping tears of hilarity from his big moon eyes. I say, he gasped, that was a spot of fun. We haven't double-teamed anyone like that since our last family reunion, when Auntie Tizzy got tiddly and... What happened? I bellowed. We won, Gus cheered. One and a half to... One and a half to one. They never knew what hit them. It's one for the record book, Tananda agreed, dabbing at her nose. For the record book, Gus challenged. This game will fill a book by itself. Oz, old bean, Chumley called. Do you have any wine about? The assemblage seems up for a celebration. I know where it is, Bad X waved, starting for the barrels we had secreted under the work table. Hold it, Oz roared. Halt, stop, desist, and time out. I think he wants our attention, Tananda told the group. If you're all quite through, my mentor continued, shooting her a black look, I have one question. What's that? Tananda asked in her little girl voice. Quit bleeding on the bed, Oz scowled. It lacks class. What I want to know is, did any of you superstars think to pick up the trophy? That was the objective of this whole fiasco, you know. The team gestured grandly at me. With a grin, I let the disguise drop away from the trophy. Ta-da! I warbled. Happy birthday, Oz! Happy birthday, the team echoed. Oz looked at their grins, then at the trophy, then at the per their grins again. All right, he sighed. Break out the wine. The roar of approval for this speech rivaled anything that had come from the stands that afternoon as the team descended on the wine barrels like a swarm of hungry, humming mice. Well, Oz, I grinned, levitating the trophy to the floor and sliding from Gleep's back. I guess that just about winds it up. I was starting for the wine barrels when a heavy hand fell on my shoulder. There are a few loose ends to be tied up, my mentor drawled. Like what? I asked fearfully. Like the invitation you gave Masha to drop by for a visit. Invitation? I echoed in a small voice. Bad Axe told me about it, Oz grimaced. Then there's a little matter of a quick trip to Diva. To Diva? I blinked. What for? I mean, swell, but I've got to pick up our winnings, my mentor informed me. I took the place, I took the time to place a few small bets on the game while we were there. Profits don't just happen, you know. When do we start? I asked eagerly. We don't, Oz said firmly. This time I'm going alone. There's something about you and the bazaar that just doesn't mix well. But Oz, and besides, he continued, grinning broadly, there's one more loose end from this venture that will be occupying your time, one which only you can handle. Really? I said proudly. What's that? Well, my mentor said, heading for the wine, 
you can start thinking about how you're going to get that stupid dragon out of our room. He's too big to fit through the door or the window. Bleep, said my pet, licking my face.